Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. This is section 542. It's part two of magnetostatic boundary conditions. Um, I'm going to go fast. You can always rewind. Questions go in comments or video responses and be sure to like and share with your friends. Um, so this is what happens when you cross a surface current. Just like when you cross a surface charge, the magnetic field and the potential change, and there's certain rules about how they change and, you know, the first derivative of the derivative, uh, the first derivative of the potential has to equal zero above and below it. But uh, here we're going to have what happens when we do crossing a surface current. So we have this equation, which basically comes from um, the divergence of b being zero, and we're going to take our little surface, and we're going to draw a pillbox. Um, and this is a terrible, terrible drawing. And our little surface current, um, when we zoom in with our um, super microscope of calculus, so we have some k vector that's moving the surface current across there. And so this, we know that the flux, the magnetic flux through this box must be zero because the divergence of B is zero. So what does that mean? Um, so we have the perpendicular component of B and we're going to close this box to as small as we can get to it um, above has to equal the perpendicular component of the B below. Okay. What this says is that um, the B vector, when you cross that component, the perpendicular component, the point above, uh, points above or below, does not change. Right. So if we're putting this inside of some magnetic field, the magnetic field will not jump as we cross there. The electric field does change. Remember, if we have a surface charge, um, when you jump it's going to increase by a certain amount because the the flux of the electric field is not zero, it's equal to the, the charge enclosed. Okay, so um, As for the tangential components, so the parts that go parallel to the surface, we have to draw an Amperian loop. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Um, let's draw our Amperian loop like this. Blue, 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 and it goes right through that surface. Okay, so it cuts right through that surface. Okay, so our surface current is doing something there. I probably drew it in the wrong direction. Oh well, uh, just ignore the direction of K for now. Um, so Ampere's law says that the integral of B vector dot dl over a closed loop is going to be equal to mu naught the current enclosed okay which that is going to be um, mu naught the surface current times the length um, I should have drawn this perpendicular so ignore this box this is drawn perpendicular so whatever this so we're going perpendicular to the current there okay and the vertical components won't change as we go up or down. You know, this side is going to be the same as that side, so they're going to equal. So the only difference is going back and forth. And so we get the parallel component above minus the parallel component below is equal to this mu naught KL. Okay. Um, oh, we have the factor of L, so we have to, there's an L there. L, L cancel the factor so we get the rule that B parallel above um, minus B parallel below is equal to the surface current okay perpendicular to that okay next the component of B which is parallel to the surface but perpendicular to the current is discontinuous in the amount of mu naught K okay so it has to make this jump when you go above and below the B field is going to go whoop Whoop. Or if it's like really long this way, it's going to get shorter by the amount of current that's passing through. Um, what about a vector? How does that behave? Um, the vector potential. Oh, we can actually do this. Let's put these all together. Is equal to mu naught and k vector cross the normal. Okay, that's a singular formula that is really cool, 
because it summarizes these two into one simple formula. All right, the uh, a vector, what does it do? Well, the a vector is the, um, So the a vector is not going to change as we cross that boundary. Uh, let me see if I can give a good explanation of why this is. Um, so the reason why is the divergence of a is zero by choice, and the curl of a is equal to the b vector and the oh when you cross that boundary the tangential components have to be continuous they can't they can't shift because of the curl there um, he has this formula that might make it a little easier to understand so he says the, limp, the integral of a vector dot dl this is the ampere's law for the a vector is equal to the magnetic flux. Okay, so you draw an Amperian loop with the a vector, an Amperian loop with the a vector, and you calculate the magnetic flux through there. The only difference is going to be the um, parallel component, which jumps. Okay, and so basically the you know the b vector there, if you're including that surface, the the a vector can't. Um, change. However, the first derivative of a vector with respect to the normal minus the first derivative of the a vector below versus the normal has to be equal to the, the current there. Okay. So um, the this is the parallel to what we had with the potential and electric sta electrostatics. You know, when you jumped, the first derivative, the potential is the same. It doesn't change when you jump, but the first derivative does. So there's a nice little parallel there. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope this helps. I hope it wasn't too confusing. Take care and goodbye.